It turned out to be a who really wants it that bad game. Class 4A semifinals between San Antonio Veterans Memorial and Dallas Kimball back and forth. All contest long third quarter. Zachary Rigg uses some speed, break the press. He got in there for a two-pointer. Less than 30 seconds left in the frame. Garvia Merriweathers makes a layup. Vets lead 36-35 after three fourth quarter. Dennis DeMarion driving to the hoop, dishes to William Navarro. Patriots within two, but Dallas Kimball goes on a Big run, and they end up winning at 50 to 47. Both teams made 16 field goals and three three-pointers apiece, but Kimball was three better at the free throw line. And now they are moving on. Of course, it stings a little bit. We had a couple of turnovers late, even by myself, some missed free throws. Um, like Coach uh, commented on, can't knock the effort. Uh, I mean, I wish it turned out different, but we've left it all on the floor. They did what they were supposed to do. You know, and then a couple came out. You know, we, we'd like to have another crack at it, but you just don't get that. And um, I, I think they they held their own. And for it to uh, be a one possession game, it speaks to their character. Can't fault leaving it all on the floor. Veterans Memorial wraps up their season at 36 and. Childress beat Lytle 69-48. Lytle picked up some early fouls and Childress took advantage. The Pirates finished the season at 34 and 7. Bernie Greyhounds are going to take on the Houston Washington Golden Eagles later on today. It's the 4A state semifinals at 3 o'clock in the Dome. This marks the Greyhounds third straight trip to state and their sixth overall as a program. So what does Bernie need to do to advance to the 4A championship game? We got to stick together. We got to play as a team. You know, we got to break their press. They're, they got some, some great athletes. So uh, we got to stay composed and stay true to ourselves and play our defense and get good shots on offense. Definitely stop number two. Uh, he's a pretty good shooter, pretty good player. Uh, number 11's a, a big kid, so kind of taking them two out and making the rest of them win the game. They've got a couple of Division One players on the team, so it's a challenge, but you know, it's what you expect when you get to the state tournament. You know, you don't expect anything else, and uh, we're up for the challenge, and, and, and we're looking forward to it. And last but not least, Beaumont United and Brennan will square off tonight at 7 o'clock in the Class 6A state semifinals. I want to get the bottom line is the UTSA women's basketball team found a way to get it done. They pulled off the upset over Rice to advance to the Conference USA semifinals. Roadrunners struggled in the first half and trailed 31-19 at halftime. They made six of 30 field goal attempts, and at one point they missed 17 consecutive shots. But they regrouped during halftime, scored 15 in the third, season high 28 in the fourth for that big comeback and stun number three Rice, 62-54. Conference USA Player of the Year, Jordan Jenkins scored 12 of her game high 22 in that decisive fourth frame. All year long, we've had close ones, whether it's a close loss or a close win. Um, we've learned how to fight through, fight through for 40 minutes and just go possession by possession and just stick it out to the end. I really think we started moving the needle uh, somewhat. I mean, a month ago, you know, you could really tell that this team was gelling, but I think today they. They found a, a version of themselves that I'm not sure they knew they had. All right, UTSA will play number two seed Western Kentucky in the conference semifinals. The towel rack, they write about Western Kentucky Athletics, tweeted that the lady top draws literally the best draw they could possibly dream. First they played number 10 UAB and now they get number six seed UTSA. Ooh, that sounds like bulletin board material. This has UTSA fans fired up, including head coach Jeff Trailer, who hit the RT and wrote, be careful what you wish for. Hope Coach Carrot and the women's team gets to see that. You know they will. <laughs> After five days off the court, Spurs back in action tonight, hosting the Denver Nuggets. Tip off of that one, 7 o'clock, AT&T Center. We'll have highlights coming up for you tonight on the Night Beat. They got some practice time in, what they needed. Well, what I was going to say is if I knew that team could do that in the, the final minutes of a game, mm -hmm. I'd be a little intimidated. Yeah, I wouldn't be messing with him. Be careful you. what you wish for. Exactly. We'll see. Good luck. New Today at 5. Find out how you can get unlimited access to your family doctor. And all you would have to do for it is to pay a monthly rate. Today at 5, hear from a woman who says she is saving hundreds of dollars a month after switching to direct primary care.
There was a deadly mass shooting at a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall in Germany. And police say a lone gunman shot and killed seven people, four people, two women, as well as an unborn child, before then killing himself. ABC's M. Wim with why there are questions about a previous investigation of the shooter that somehow allowed him to buy a gun. The Hamburg, Germany community in shock after a gunman opened fire at a Jehovah Witnesses Kingdom Hall, killing seven people, including an unborn child. German authorities say the suspected gunman, a former member of the congregation, acted alone and then killed himself after police stormed the building, but not before injuring eight others, four of them seriously. Police are still searching for a motive. Das ist jetzt passiert. Das ist die the interior minister saying this is the worst crime in the recent history of our city. He says when shots rang out, police arrived within minutes of the first emergency call, which came in around 9.04. Almost immediately after that, a special operations unit that happened to be in the area got to the scene and was able to separate the gunmen from others. Top officials crediting that swift response for saving many lives. And I will also give a special mention to the Hamburg police who reacted with speed and incredible bravery bringing people to safety. Police identified the suspected shooter as 35-year-old Philip F., saying he fired more than 100 rounds during the attack. They say the man was previously investigated after authorities received a tip that he might not be suitable to bear firearms, but was ultimately cleared. Police say he legally purchased the semi-automatic pistol used in the shooting in December. Attacks are always despicable, but attacks on places of worship, by definition, places of peace is truly shocking. Jehovah's Witnesses saying in a statement the shooter attacked after their midweek meeting had ended, adding our prayers are with all those affected. Police say the suspected gunman had no criminal record and no terrorist background. The investigation continues. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. More setbacks for an embattled railway company at the center of several high-profile derailments. The train traveling from Georgia to Mississippi derailed in a wooded area in Alabama yesterday. No one hurt in that incident. This happened just as Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw was testifying in a Senate hearing, vowing to fix the situation in East Palestine. You recall that massive derailment spewed toxic chemicals under that Ohio community. And even though the CEO is vowing to make it right, some Ohio residents aren't completely convinced because of possible lasting effects. Well, I mean, it's great that he wants to put millions into everything, but that's not going to change how people's health is. They, if the health is already ruined by this air and stuff, unfortunately, that's not going to help. Meanwhile, Norfolk Southern is also investigating a different derailment in Springfield, Ohio. The company now says that March 4th wreck was caused by loose wheels. The company said it also identified additional case of, quote, unusual wheel movement, end quote. It's now issued order to remove the cars from service until their wheel sets can be replaced and have taken steps to remove the cars from service until they can be fully inspected. Safety versus convenience. It's an argument that is dividing neighbors in Northwest Bear County when it comes to traffic. Now, county residents who cut through a Holoda Street could soon be fined for it. People living in Davis Ranch have used Beverly Hills Drive to get to FM 1560 much more quickly than another route. But the city of Holotus just passed an ordinance banning through traffic on Beverly Hills. People who get caught might see a fine between $250 and $500. Those who have used the shortcut in the past say having to go around adds nearly an hour to their commute. Traffic in San Antonio is bad enough, and now we're being limited on our roads that we can use. However, those living along the Holotus City streets say that traffic is just too much for their little neighborhood. Just taking a walk in the neighborhood or walking their dogs, uh, kids riding their bikes, uh, that's not possible anymore with this amount of traffic. It's dangerous. Holotus Mayor Rich Whitefield tells KSAT that the ordinance is just for more than safety, but to preserve the street that isn't built to handle high volume traffic. P uh, city, uh, rather county, Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says legally the county can't fight the city ordinance on this, but he is looking to find an alternative solution with the city of Holotus. The first in a new series of atmospheric river flowed into California, and now forecasters warn that widespread heavy rain would raise the threat of flooding in a state still digging out from earlier storms. The flood threat will come from the combination of rain and the melting snow. 
Meanwhile, in Southern California, the death toll is expected to rise after back-to-back -back blizzards devastated mountain communities east of Los Angeles. The San Bernardino Sheriff's Office says at least 13 people have died since the first storm hit. And I was just reading that they've got some evacuations underway. They're having mudslides in California and all kinds of things. The, the, the bad news continues there. The good news continues here, Justin. Well, it's pretty incredible that they went from being in a serious, serious drought to almost erasing that drought in one season. It does kind of indicate uh, to me that we are starting to see a switch over from the La Nina to more El Nino type patterns. Again, we'll see how that affects our forecast going forward. We're still dry here. And if you're squeamish, you may want to look away. Look at this picture. This is from our KSAC Connect. This was a snake that looks like a coral snake found near the road near Foster Meadows and Bear Branch. It's that time of year again. It sure is. All the varmints are coming out right now. So just, uh, just keep an eye out. Uh, we don't want to run into that. Thank you so much for that picture. Uh, let's look at airport delays across the country. A lot of people traveling right now. There are no, no delays here in San Antonio. There is some active weather though out west and it's conceivable we could see some delays there. We are seeing one in Los Angeles, about a 45 minute delay for folks uh, flying into LAX or out of LAX. Otherwise, no other delays, at least at the moment, but it is going to be a busy uh, traveling next couple of days. Uh, 3 p.m., 71 degrees. We're up around 73 this afternoon, down into the 60s tonight, but it's not going to get all that chilly. I, yes, it's cooler today, but we're not going to see a really cool overnight because moisture surges back in. Clouds are back by tomorrow morning, and tomorrow promises to be a very, very warm day. We could be approaching 90 degrees by tomorrow afternoon. More on that forecast and another cold front on Sunday coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Some big names are hoping to take home a golden statue during the Oscars. We're going to take a look at some of the tightest races still ahead. The U.S. economy added 311,000 jobs in February. That is according to the Labor Department's monthly employment snapshot released today. It's a drop from January's blockbuster jobs report that brought in 504,000 positions. Even so, February's job numbers were higher than economists predicted. The Federal Reserve has been battling for almost a year now to slow the economy and crush the high inflation in 40 years, but the labor market continues to defy those efforts. Mortgage rates took another jump, rising for the fifth week in a row. Rates are now edging further towards 7% with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 6.73%. That's up from 6.65% last week. Compare that to a year ago when the 30-year fixed rate was 3.85%. After hitting the year's high of 7.08% back in November, rates have been trending downward However, they started climbing up again in February, rising half a percentage point over the past month. Robust economic data continues to suggest the Federal Reserve is not done in its battle to cool off the U.S. economy and to likely continue hiking its benchmark lending rate. Outside with live cam, what did you say earlier? We were like in the 80s yesterday. We're not even into the 70s yet. What a nice day to enjoy. The great outdoors. It honestly is a nice change of pace. Uh, it's yeah. just unfortunate uh, that it's going to be so short lived because right, uh, right as we get into tonight and into tomorrow morning, all that moisture comes right back in and then we're back in the heat again tomorrow. 95 is the record high, so temperatures in the upper 60s. Uh, yeah, we'll take that. That was set back in 1954. 62 was the low this morning. Record lows 25 set back in 1932. A lot to look at in the seven day forecast. We'll show it to you again coming up. We are getting ready for a really nice weekend, but not quite as cool as it is today. Yeah. No, well, temperatures are going to warm up tomorrow. Sunday, they'll start falling again, and then the start of spring break, we're going to be a little bit on the cool side. But uh, we're going to enjoy today's weather. It is uh, beautiful out there right now. We do want to get you the uh, beach report if you have plans to head down to, say, Port A or Rockport this weekend or early next week. Here's what we're thinking. So uh, Saturday will be plenty warm. We're in the low 80s. Sunday, the warmest, 88. But that front, the same front that comes through here, slides through uh, the coastal areas. And by Monday, only around 70. We've got quite a bit more cloud cover, some choppy seas there, and 20% chance of showers. It's not the best forecast to start next week, but 
I'm sure there will still be people down there enjoying uh, the water temperatures, as we said yesterday, low 70s. That's, that's a little chilly, uh, but uh, hopefully it does warm up some by the end of next week. As we go outside for you here, beautiful blue skies have taken over after a cloudy morning, 70 degrees. So we're really warming up now with the sun. Uh, dew point is at 56, northeasterly winds at about 5. And as we look at temperatures, they are trying to moderate. So this front that came through this morning is starting to wash out. And that warmth is already kind of easing back to the north a little bit. 80 in Catula, 81 Creso Springs, 70s here along the Highway 90 corridor. And then you get into the Hill Country, it's quite a bit cooler. 56 Fredericksburg, 56 up in Junction. So I know a wide range of temperatures today, thanks to that frontal boundary. And for the most part, we're in the upper 60s and low 70s here in San Antonio right now. It is a gorgeous Friday afternoon. 71 at 3 o'clock, 73 I think is our high temperature today. And then we'll drop back down into the 60s tonight. Uh, clouds fill in by the time we get to the uh, 10 o'clock hour as that moisture tries to make a comeback. And then we'll see maybe some fog, patchy fog in the morning. The dew points uh, will be on a roller coaster right here next couple of days. So it's a little drier today. And then we see those dew points jump back up into the upper 60s in some cases by tomorrow. So Saturday's a muggy and hot day. Then our front comes through and the dew points really drop off. We get some very dry air by Sunday afternoon and Monday into Tuesday. Here is the uh, big picture across Texas. We've still got some low clouds hanging on across West Texas, but no rain associated with those clouds. All the rain's off to the east, and we completely missed out on rain last night with the front, which is unfortunate. Uh, it looked like we could at least scare up a shower or two. Didn't even get that. Well, so we uh, we still need a lot more rain in the forecast. And uh, while we do have these fronts, they're just not generating any rain. So we're going to talk about temperatures uh, with these fronts uh, since we don't have any rain chances really to speak of. As we get into Saturday morning, warm front comes through. Warmth starts to spread back into our area, and tomorrow will be a hot and humid day. A lot of places will be pushing 90 degrees. Then as we get into Sunday, here comes our next front. Slides in by Sunday morning, and it'll be, still be somewhat warm during the afternoon on Sunday. But as we get into Sunday night and Monday morning, you'll really start to feel the difference. And Monday and Tuesday will be fairly cool. We'll get the northerly wind. You'll see some mornings in the 40s and 50s. So that's to start next week. And there could even be a stray shower or two, although I'm not, uh, I'm not too keen on it. I don't think we're going to get a ton of rain out of that. It should be, if we get anything, a few sprinkles or maybe a light shower Monday and Tuesday. We'll, we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, but in the meantime, there are your up and down temperatures. 88 tomorrow, 82 Sunday, down into the 60s Monday, Tuesday, back into the 70s Wednesday, Thursday. And we get another front. Looks uh, to arrive maybe Friday of next week. Uh, the fronts are great. Uh, it's nice that we get a variety of temperatures, but I just wish, wish that uh, it would generate some rain because we need it. Still, I feel like I've said that statement probably a million times now, but it's it's the truth. It is the truth. Yeah. Sorry we missed out last night. Yep. Thank you, Justin. It could be a history-making night at the Oscars Sunday night. A look at some of the films favored to win in their categories coming up next. We're just two days away from the 95th Academy Awards, and it is time to fill out your Oscar ballot. ABC's Chris Connolly is keeping track of all the races for us. Don't think you can watch all 10 Best Picture noms before Sunday? Well, buckle up. Top Gun Mavericks, available now on Amazon and on Paramount Plus. But if you're looking for something more grounded, Women Talking is about a group of Mennonite women deciding if they should leave their secluded colony. We could ask the men to leave. Ask the men to leave? It's only 104 minutes long, the shortest nominee this year, and it's available on Amazon or YouTube. From Mennonites to the mega wealthy on a mega yacht. This is really, really bad. Triangle of Sadness is streaming now on Hulu. And All Quiet on the Western Front is streaming on Netflix. It's the second adaptation of the novel by the same name to be up for Best Picture. The first All Quiet won that honor at the Oscars in 1930. But flashing back to the future... What was your favorite part? The Fablemans, loosely based on Steven Spielberg's real life, is available to rent and purchase on Apple TV, YouTube, and Amazon. And Austin Butler's Elvis is streaming now on HBO Max. 
around that same length and also dealing with a musical mastermind, Tar, starring Kate Blanchett, is on Amazon and Apple TV for rent or purchase and is streaming on Peacock. The slow-burning and visually gorgeous Banshees of Inna Sharon. I just don't like you no more. You didn't like me yesterday. Is streaming now on HBO Max. I see you. Avatar The Way of Water is still in theaters and is this year's longest Best Picture nominee at 3 hours and 12 minutes. If you only have time for one flick before Sunday night, watch Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's the most nominated film of the year and is the front runner for Best Picture. Everything Everywhere All at Once is available to rent or to buy on Prime Video. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. How do you sit through a movie for three hours these days if there's not an intermission? Or is there intermission? I don't know. I haven't seen that one. I don't know, but I did watch the Everything Everywhere All at the oh, Same okay. Time or whatever it's called. That was actually a fun movie to watch. Yeah. It's all confusing to me. Good thing Mike and Fiona are down there to straighten it all out for us. Oh, 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 oh no, they're not. Oh, wow. They are not. Oh, go. my gosh. We are ready for the Oscars, aren't we? <laughs> we are. Yes, we are counting down. I'm solo today. We miss you, Mike and Fiona. But if you are planning an Academy Awards themed party, we've got you covered. Stephanie Pena Frost from Princess and the Monkey Home Decor is here. Look, I'm giving you a little sample sparkly, right? That's all you need for a fun party. Now, from movie magic to actual magic, we have Nick Paul, magician in town with a fun show mm -hmm. at the Magician's Agency. Now, you're going to give us a sample yeah, of it. Yeah, I want to give you a prize. Oh. I feel I feel like you des you work hard. Okay. You deserve a prize. Okay. We didn't set this up. Whatever you choose, I'll give you. A through F. What would you like? Uh, C. C. All right. C for <laughs> cool. All right. Let's see what you get. This is exciting. Oh, this is nice. You already have one of these. It's a smile. Oh, oh that's a lovely, yes. that's a lovely okay. smile there. That's great. I'm so glad you helped. <laughs> and that you chose that. That <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm so glad. Wow. How did you do that? I don't know. All right, we're gonna move on. If you wanna get glammed up and get inspired, we have our amazing glam squad turning these gorgeous ladies. Look at, they are ready for the red carpet. Look how beautiful they look. We're gonna tell you where these dresses are from and some styling tips as well. And if you need to put together your own San Antonio themed swag bag, hey, I'm all about that. We've got Elsa Fernandez here with Eye Candy Boutique, and I'm excited to see what's in those bags. Also, what is your all time favorite movie? Do you have one? Sometimes that's a difficult question. We want to know. We'll share your answers on the show. Stick around. We're having a party.